Hi everybody. Welcome everyone back to Loon Dev's YouTube channel. In front of the screen is a slider with strange effects. At a glance, everything in this design is quite simple. However, the smooth transition slider effect will make up for everything. In the default state, the slider consists of three main components. Short introduction, image, and navigation buttons. The items are arranged in a row, they will fade and disappear. The special effect will appear as soon as we press the next or previous button. When pressing next or previous button, the images will move, the corresponding content of the sliders will also be displayed accordingly. Combined with filter, blur creates an extremely smooth feeling. You can press next or previous forever and never run out of sliders because it creates an infinite loop. When the user clicks the see more button, other items will be pushed off the screen. To give up all the space for the currently active item, this will display more detailed content related to the product. If you want to return to the original state, just click the back button. And that is our slider design using HTML, CSS and JavaScript in this video. If you find it interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to follow many good ideas and codes for free. Thank you very much. Here I have prepared some images to make this slider. All of these images are backgroundless images. Do not worry. If you are having satisfactory photos but have a background, visit the Remove BG website. Then drop your photo here. After just two seconds, it will help you remove the background. Now, I will create three files HTML, CSS and JavaScript. In HTML, I will format the code according to HTML5. Then embed the CSS and JavaScript paths here. And this is my website. Before creating sliders, I will spend some time creating the website header. Header will consist of two parts, logo and nav. Because the current font is very bad. So I will go to Google Fonts to find another font. The font I want to use is called Poppins. Here, you can choose the options that you will use, or you can choose all of them like me. Then click import, copy this code and paste it at the beginning of the CSS file. Now at body, I just declare font family, poppins. And it worked. Margin. Zero to remove the margin. With link tags. I use text decoration. None, to remove the bottom lines and give the text a dark color. Header. I want the default width when accessing on devices with large screens to be 1140 pixels. For smaller screens, it will be 90% of that screen size. Margin. Auto, to put the header in the middle. Height. 50px. Use display. Flex to put two elements on the same row. And with justify content, space between, the elements will be moved to both sides. Align items. Center to center according to height. With logo. I want the font to be bolder to make it stand out. As for the nav elements. Use margin left, 30px to space them. Because the focus of this article is the slider, we only need 2 minutes for the header, the remaining time is for the slider. To create a complete carousel, it will include the following elements. The first element is list. The list will contain many items for the slider. Each item will include three main elements, image, introduction. This is the default information that will appear with the item when it is activated. And finally the detailed content. This will be hidden information, it will only appear when the user clicks on the see more button to see more content about that product. So now proceed to code according to this diagram. I created a class called carousel that will contain the entire content of the slider. In the carousel there will be a class list. The list class will contain many items, each item will consist of three elements. Image. Intro. In the intro I will create brief content such as title, topic, short description and a see more button. When the user clicks on this see more button, the screen will display the content of the detail class. In detail I will also create some more detailed content such as title, detailed description, technical specifications and two add to cart or checkout now buttons. This is just sample information, you can completely replace it with other information you want.
This is just sample information. You see so I have just created a complete item. Now I will create five more similar items. And because each item has three components, image, intro and detail. So I'll copy and paste to make it faster. Then for each item, I just change the necessary information such as images and content and completely replace it with other information you want. And that is the first component of a carousel. The second element I want to create are the arrows. Includes next button, previous button, and back button. This back button will be used to help users viewing the details content return to its original state. So let's proceed with the code. I created a class arrows. Inside there are three buttons with ids next, previous and back. And this is the entire content of the HTML we will be working with. CSS side. At the carousel. I want the carousel to be pushed up to the top of the screen, but this area already belongs to the header. So you'll notice that the header height is 50 pixels. So in the carousel, we declare margin top, minus 50 pixels. And so the carousel is located right on the screen. However, now our logo is hidden because the carousel is over it. Use position combined with Z index to help the header overlap the carousel. The rule is that the element with the larger Z index will be placed on top of the other element. Elements that do not declare Z index will be interpreted as zero. Height, 800 px. Overflow, hidden, so that content longer than 800 pixels will be cut off. Position, relative so that the elements inside can be positioned according to it. So let's go to the list class. Position, absolute to move it according to position relative of the carousel class. The top and left distance of the carousel is zero. Width, 1140 px. Max width, 90%. Unlike header, to put the element in the middle we use margin, auto. Then for elements that declare position, absolute. To put it in between we have to use it. Left, 50% and transform. Translate by minus 50% combined. Finally, the height of the list will be 80% of the carousel. Coming to the item classes. I again use position. Absolute to move it to a position 0 from the top and left of the list class. Width. 70% and height. 100% of the size of the list class. The default font size is 15 pixels. The image within each item will be half the size of the item. Use position to move it to the right. To bring the image into the middle of the frame vertically. I use top. 50% and transform. Translate y minus 50%. In initial state. All content in the detail class will be hidden. I will use opacity. 0. Because the purpose of opacity is to make everything blurry. But it doesn't really disappear. So combine it with pointer events. None. To make the mouse pointer never touch it. With intro. This is the content that will appear on the screen in the default state when details are not displayed. Use position. Absolute. Top. 50%. Transform. Translate Y minus 50% to center the class according to height. Along with width. 400 pixels. Before continuing to code. Let's sketch out this design together. To make it easier to visualize and help code faster. This red border will represent the frame of a carousel. Each circle inside will represent one item. The first item will be placed right on the left border of the carousel. The second item is arranged right next to it. The third item will be placed immediately after the second item and will be smaller in size. The fourth item will be placed right on the right edge of the carousel and will be smaller in size. And finally I have the fifth item, the smallest and placed outside the carousel class. I will number them to make it easier to see. Looking at this design, we will easily realize that the item in the second position is a large item and is completely located in the frame. Then I will take this second item as the active item position. So now we go back to the code. All intro content of other items must be hidden. Only information about the currently active item is displayed. And it is the second item. To display it, I will use opacity, 1. Note that when hidden, we used pointer events. None so that the user cannot manipulate it. 
then when it shows up, must use pointer events, auto so users can manipulate it, to make each hiding and appearing smoother. I declare transition, opacity 0.5s, to specify the opacity value change time as 0.5s. Let's look at this sketch again. On the screen in this range there are only 5 items. That means the 6th item onwards will be temporarily hidden. So we have. The items are at position n plus 6. They will all be hidden with opacity, 0 and pointer events, none. Don't be mistaken. No matter how many items there are, the slider will work well. Because it will continuously take turns becoming an active item when the user clicks the next button. Our next problem is determining the position of the first five items on the screen. Because the second item is the active item. So I will align the position of the second item first. I will use Excel to remember the location information of these items first. It's not important, it's just to help me remember better. The properties I will use include. Transform to move. Filter to blur. Z index to determine which item is above which item and opacity to specify whether the item is hidden or visible. Now code. First, I will select the second active item as the standard. Since it's an active item, I won't need to move it. So transform will have the value 00. zero. Filter. Blur to blur the image, because it is active, it will not be blurred. The default Z index for the second item is 10. And of course, opacity, 1 to show the item. And these are the attributes that will affect the position of the items. I will write this information down here so we can see it more easily. Next is the location for the first item. Use transform to move it 100% left, 5% up, and enlarge it 1.5x. Because it is not an active item. Use filter. Blur 30 pixels to blur it. I want it to overlap the activated item. So its Z index must be greater than the second item. If you want to hide it always, set opacity, 0. And don't forget that elements declaring opacity, 0 should be used with pointer events, none to ensure users cannot manipulate it. I will continue to record this data to make it easier to remember. Similarly, I will continue calculating for the position of the third item. It will move to the right 50% and bottom 10%. Shrink it to 0.8 times its original size. Blur to make it look a bit blurry. Z index will be smaller than the active item. And opacity. 1 because I still want it to be visible on the screen. Now the fourth item. It will move to the right 90% and bottom 20%. Shrink it to 0.4 times its original size. Blur to make it look blurrier. Opac T. 1 and Z index. Finally, the fifth item. This item will have to be farther away and smaller than the fourth item. Blur to make it look blurrier. And use opacity, 0 to hide it. And this is the entire position for the items in the slider. The reason I have to record these changes is because the slider is active. Our items will constantly change positions and have to reuse these values many times. The solution here is instead of rewriting these values many times, I will create global variables. Global variables will be declared in the root section. Normally, the root location is after the body. I proceed to declare global variables related to the item in position 1 such as transform, filter, z index and opacity. Corresponds to each value we found when bouncing. after creating global variables related to the item in position 1. So here, I don't need to write its value directly. Instead, I use the var function and call the corresponding global variable. And it still works fine. Likewise, I will create global variables related to items 2, 3, 4, and 5. After creating the global variables, I replaced them with the corresponding items.
so from now on, whenever you need to use information related to the location of these items, I just call the corresponding global variable. Now it's time to design the navigation buttons. Position. Absolute to move the position. Bottom. 10 pixels. Width. 1140 pixels. Max width. 90%. Use left. 50% in transform. Translatex minus 50% to center the component. Use display. Flex to align content inside. Justify content. Space between to arrange buttons evenly to the sides. Align items. Center to ensure the buttons are on the same level. Next are two buttons previous and next. Because it is an id, there will be a hash sign in front of it. Width and height are 40 pixels to form a square. Border radius. 50% to convert to circle. Font family. Monospace. Font size. Large. Font weight. Bold. And the one pixel border is dark. Back button. Font family. Poppins. Font weight. 500. Delete the original border and replace it with a bottom border. Letter spacing is the spacing of letters. Background color. Transparent. Its use is to click to switch from the slider state to view detailed content to the original state. So in its original state, it will be hidden. Opacity. Zero. Pointer events. None. The final step before processing JavaScript. That is the redesign of the intro's content. The title of the intro will be 2M in size. Because the item has a default font size of 15 pixels. So 2M will be 15 times 2 equals 30 pixels. Similarly, topic will be 4M. Font weight, 500. Use line height to reduce the spacing of the lines. For short description, I will make the size smaller. And finally the see more button. Background color, transparent. Delete the default border and replace it with a bottom border. Font family, poppins. Font weight, bold. Margin top, 1.2 EM. Padding top and bottom. 5 pixels. And that's the shape for the class intro frame. Next is the part that creates the animation effect when it is activated. All components inside the intro include Title Topic Short Description See More button. It is temporarily hidden with opacity, 0. It then runs an animation called Show Content to appear. This animation will run within 0.5 seconds and will be delayed 1 second before running. Animation show content specifically works as follows. Initial. Content is moved 50 pixels down. And blurred with blur. When running animation. It started to return to its original position. Blur and opacity values are zero for visibility. It doesn't stop there. I want to create a more dramatic effect by delaying the content behind it. If the title will be delayed 0.7 seconds before running the animation. Then the following components will have a longer delay. Specifically, topic will be delayed 0.9 seconds. Description will be delayed 1.1 seconds. The see more button will be delayed 1.3 seconds. And this is exactly the effect I expected. Now we will move on to JavaScript to work. The first thing to do is recall the HTML components we need. The first is the next button. Since it is an ID, use get element by ID. The previous button and back button are the same. The see more button is a special case. Because it is a class, we will use query selector. And each item has a button, so it has a lot of these buttons. So let's add the word all. Carousel has only one so it will be query selector. List HTML is where the items are stored. And we only have one list class. When the user clicks on the next or previous button, both of them run the same function. In this function, it will call another function named show slider to distinguish which button was clicked. Then the show slider of the next button will be passed into a type variable with the value next. The opposite is previous. Proceed with the function show slider, where type is the value the user passes in. The first thing I will do is get the list of all the items in the slider here to process. If the user clicks on the next button, then our slider will move from right to left, i.e. the item in position 5 will go to position 4. 
The fourth item will move to the third position. The third item will move to position 2. The second item will move to the first position. And the first item will move to the last position. Remember, it creates an infinite loop. So the key here is that we just need to move the first item to the last position. The remaining positions will be moved accordingly. So when the user presses next, I use the following function append child with the input value being item 0. Item 0 is the item in the first position. Append child is the function that moves the item to the end of the row. And list HTML is the class containing all items. Everyone can see that the active item has changed. If you are wondering, using append child will cause the code to create more items rather than move them. Then look here. Here I have six items. When done click next. There are no new items added. The location of the moved items. However, it does not create a nice transition effect. To create that, when the user clicks the next button, I added a next class to the carousel class to signal that I should create an effect for the next active. And the problem of creating effects is CSS. Is it true that when the user presses the next button, the items will be moved to the left? So the first item originates from the item in position 2. Right. So in the first item, I let it run an animation called position item 2 within 0.5 seconds. Animation position item 2 has the value in from which is the initial value of a normal second item. Thanks to that, it will create an effect that moves from position 2 to the first position. And it worked. Similarly, the third item will move to the position of the second item. So in the second item, call an animation named position item 3 within 0.7 seconds. This animation will have the initial value which is the position of the third item. Thanks to that, it will create a moving effect for the second item. The third item will move to the position of the fourth item. So in item 4, call an animation named position item 4 within 0.9s. This animation will have an initial value that is the position of the fourth item. Thanks to that, it will create a moving effect for the third item. Finally, the fourth item, will move from the position of the fifth item. So in item 4, call an animation named position item 5 within 0.9s. This animation will have an initial value that is the position of the fifth item. Thanks to that, it will create a moving effect for the fourth item. Why is there still one undone item that is the fifth item but I said the fourth item is the last item? Because in principle, the last item will be moved from the first item. And both of these positions have opacity, zero. We can't see it, so there's no need to do it. Now when I proceed click on next button. The effect I expected has come true. So that's the event when the user clicks the next button. Now there will be an event when the user clicks on the previous button. Because there is a next event as a sample. So the process of making this previous button will be much faster. When the user presses previous. Contrast with next. Slider tends to move to the right. Item 1 will go to position 2. Item position 2 will increase to 3. And so on until the last item. This last item will be moved to the first position to form an infinite loop. So let's proceed with the code. When the user presses the previous button, we have position last which is the position of the last item. Use prepend to move it up to the first position. Along with that, add a class named previous to the carousel to signal and create effects for the previous button click event. In CSS, when the user presses the previous button, then the first item will move to the second item position. So in the second item, I run an animation called position item 1 for 0.5 seconds. Animation position item 1 has the initial value which is the default position of the first item. Thanks to that, it creates an effect of moving from the first position to the second position. The third item will be moved from the position of the second item, which is the animation, position item 2. Similarly, the fourth item will be moved from the position of the third item. I run an animation position item 3. The fifth item will be moved from the position of the fourth item. 
I run an animation position item 4. We created these animations while making the next active effect. So we just reuse it. And it worked. However, please pay attention to this case. When the user just presses the next button and then presses the previous button. Then our animation runs haphazardly. That's because now in the carousel class there is both next and previous. Makes it not know which event to run the animation on. To fix this. When running function show slider. Let's delete all the previous next and previous classes. While the animation is running. I don't want the user to click the next and previous buttons continuously. So at the beginning of the function show slider. I set the pointer event of these two buttons to none. At this point, the user will not be able to click again. I continue to create a variable unaccept click to specify the time for the user to click again. Use set time out for regulation. After 2 seconds. The pointer event of these two buttons is auto so they can be clicked again normally. Use clear time out to ensure the time restarts from the beginning when the animation runs. Next. When the user clicks the see more button. I need to display detailed content instead of intro. Because there are many see more buttons. So I need to use a loop. When the user clicks on any button. I proceed to add the show detail class to the carousel. At CSS. When capturing the show detail event. I will move the position of the third and fourth item off the screen with left. 100% to make room for the active item. To create smoother transitions. Then all items will have an additional transition left of 0.5 seconds. It will then be hidden. The opacity transition will also be 0.5 seconds. In this state. The width of the second item will be enlarged by 100%. The intro content is hidden. The image will be shifted 50% to the right. To create a smoother moving effect. I will declare transition. Right 0.5 seconds. Finally, the content of the detail will be displayed. Remember to add pointer events. Auto so users can operate it. Width. 50%. Position. Absolute to change position. Right. 0. Text align. Right. Top. 50%. Transform. Translate Y minus 50%. Title of detail will have font size. 4M. The specifications use flex to make elements stay in the same row. Gap. 10 pixels is the distance of the elements. Width. 100%. Border top. 1px solid number 5555. And margin top. 20 pixels. For each div inside specifications. All have width. 90 pixels. Text align. Center. Lex shrink. 0 to fix this size. The first p tag will have bold font to stand out. With buttons inside the checkout class. Font family. Poppins. Background color. Transparent. Border dark. Margin left. 5 pixels. Font weight. 500. The second button will be distinguished by its blue color. And that is the frame of detail. Next. I need to create a more beautiful effect. Reuse the animation show content of the intro. So now. All classes inside detail will also call animation show content. To create a smoother effect. Then the following components will add a delay value so that it runs the animation slower than the previous components. When the carousel is in this state. I will hide the next button and the previous button. And instead the back button will appear. When the user clicks on the back button. I will delete the show detail class in the carousel. To return the slider to its original state. It worked very well. This slider is now working. However, the background is too simple. I will use before. Before is a virtual element generated right inside the carousel. It will have. Width. 500 pixels. Height. 300 pixels. The content attribute must be declared for this component to appear. Use background linear gradient to create a multicolored background. Position. 
absolute to move the position. Z index. Minus 1 to ensure it does not overlap any website content. Border radius I choose 4 random numbers to create random curves. Filter. Blur to create a blur effect. Top. 50%. Left. 50%. Transform. Translate minus 10%, minus 50%. Transition. 1 second. When the carousel falls into the show detail state, I will use transform to move its position while also rotating its 70 deg. And that is the slider interface with animation effects that I want to aim for. We will spend the remaining few minutes implementing responsiveness. On the iPad screen, I will enlarge the width of the item to 90%. The initial default is 70%. Specifications are also having problems because the content is too long. I just added overflow. Auto so it creates a scroll bar. We come to the mobile screen. With each item, width will be 100%. The font will shrink to 10 pixels. The height of the carousel class will be 600 pixels. List will have a height equal to 100% of the carousel. The intro class will have width, 50%. The size of the image will be reduced to 40%. Title font size is 2M. Because the content in the diaper is too long, I will limit the height to 100 pixels. With overflow, auto, if the content is longer, a scroll bar will appear. Finally, there are two checkout buttons. Display. Flex so it never goes down the line. Width. Max content. Float. Right. And this is the entire content for today's video project. If you find it interesting, don't forget to like to support me and subscribe to the channel to follow many new videos every day. And if you have any problems or ideas you want to share, please leave a comment to share with me. Thanks everyone. See you again in the next video.